Last part, we learned that the germanium crystals that the Zeng Kethi have been chasing down and raising planets for were in fact eggs containing a species of insect they called the Dranzuli, when they hatched and almost overran a colony world that we were helping establish. We allied with Neth Par, a Zenkethi soldier, to clear them, but the greater Zenkethi forces soon made a move on a series of other planets outside of UFP space with their protomatter torpedoes. While defending those, Par leaked the next target in their agenda, Bajor. With advance notice, we were able to bring Deep Space Nine into orbit of Bajor and marshal a defence fleet to protect the Federation world. You made it. Good. It would be unfortunate if you missed the glory of battle after all you have endured. Captain LaForge has a briefing for you. Review it and prepare for combat. Long distance scans show a large Senkethi fleet heading our way. They will test us, and we must not be found lacking. DS9 used to orbit Bajor back when it was run by the Cardassians, and back then it was a symbol of oppression, a refinery in orbit stripping the planets below of its ores and passing them on to the Cardassian Union. Now it's returned to its former position, this time as the planet's defender outfitted with the armaments installed from the Dominion War and a central point around which we can rally. The assembled fleet consists of our USS Armager, the LSS Reshkava, the USS Challenger under the command of Captain LaForge, the IKS Corps under General Martok, as well as several Romulan Republic vessels, Klingon ships including a Nekvar warship and the local Bajoran planetary interceptors. It's hardly a fleet rivalling those in the final days of the Iconian War, but we were spread all over the Alpha Quadrant fringes, casting as large as net as possible, which does mean we may expect more reinforcements in time. Glad you could make it. We've put together a pretty impressive force to defend the planet from the Zenkefi. Let's just hope it's enough. Our objective here is straightforward. Protect Bajor at all costs. Understood. Oh, got a ping. Here they come. The time for battle is upon us. Fight well. And with honor, Kapla! The Alliance fleet picks up speed as we close in on the Zenkethi ships. Who knows if they were aware that we were ready for them, but they certainly bought enough vessels to overwhelm Bajor had we not been prepared. They're launching protomatter torpedoes. This is Sarish Mina aboard DS9. Lead the torpedoes to us. Keep those Zenkethi ships off of us if you can. As we've seen before in recent skirmishes, the Zenkethi attempt to end this fight quickly by accomplishing their objective by launching the Protomatter torpedoes. Fortunately, we shoot them down. And with that, the battle is joined. We alternate between targeting Zenkethi ships and shooting down any Protomatter torpedoes that pass close by to us. Might as well lend a hand where we can. To follow up, we follow the Challenger's lead alongside a Klingon bird of prey and target a large Razbej battleship. Attacking such a vessel head-on is actually how you target the weak points in its shielding, but doing so puts us directly in its line of fire from its missile salvos. Such a salvo appears to have severely pummeled our allies. We break off temporarily to shoot down more protomatter torpedoes, so I'm not taking any chances, not with Bajor. Eventually our combined salvos overwhelm the Razbej, but the Zenkethi have far more to throw at us. It's time the for the we move off to intercept another wing of the Zenkethi attack force. We get the attention of another Razbej and then suffer one of its opening salvos. Thanks to a timely transfer of power to our shields from the Challenger, at least I think that's what happened, we emerge practically unscathed. Alliance forces, this is Commander.
Commander Sarish Minute on DS9. That assault hit us pretty hard. We might not make it through another without some critical repairs. I need some assistance in engineering. I want the station ready to face the next wave of Zenkethi when they arrive. If you have the hands to spare, we could really use them now. Understood, Commander. The Armager's got engineers to spare. We'll beam some over. We close the transporter range and beam over our repair teams. And then the next wave arrives. Repair crews are safely aboard. Thanks for... Battle stations. The enemy is upon us. Okay, so that's something new. The Zenkethi saw our space station and raised us their own. Can someone explain to me how that thing managed to get across Federation space without being detected? We choose to target the smaller craft first, trying to free up our allies to assault the large station, but we draw the ire of a battle cruiser that tails us across the battlefield like it has our scent. Fortunately, we can see where some of its salvos are going to strike, and are able to avoid these areas. With us freeing up our allies to fight, they in turn are able to cover us and engage the Zenkethi battlecruiser that's been trailing us. Elsewhere, we can see Romulan vessels engaged with Zenkethi ships and pockets of battle across the system. I think it's time we dealt with this station, however. Zenkethi battle station shields are down. Now's our chance. Beam onto the Zenkethi battle station and shut down their launch systems. We'll do what we can to keep their fleet busy while you're there. Okay, its shields are down, and for the moment there are no Zenkethi ships in range to stop us, so dropping our deflectors we board their battle station with the goal of seizing it. At least I think that's the goal, we're pretty much winging it at this point. Ah, the unique smells of a Zenkethi vessel. It's been a while. I can't say I've missed the experience. It looks like we're on the tactical deck. Their weapon controls should be down this hallway. They're on full alert here, so expect a full security presence. Oh joy, lots of big angry space rhinos. Well, let's get moving. Zenkethi ships are closing! Okay, with the fleet engaged, our mission here is probably going to be the quickest way to end it. Scavrin? Is that weapon Starfleet legal? You know what, we'll talk about it later. Should have guessed Martok would beam over with us. He's not going to miss an opportunity to live up to the Zenkethi namesake of the Butcher. Enemy transport detected! All hands! And naturally the Zenkethi aren't going to let us stroll through their top of the line battle station. All ships! This is General Kern! Fire at will! Ah, so Rodek is now referring to himself as Kern once again. Looks like his memories have been restored. There. Weapons control is in that room, just ahead. Before we follow Martok's directions, we check a side corridor. Zenkethi used short-range transporters, instead of turbo lifts. Well, it's convenient, but it's not very power efficient. Our business is here. Let's move. Right, yes, sorry, distracted. Okay, no, it doesn't work, never mind. We've lost phasers. Cover us while we make repairs. Zenkethi reinforcements inbound. Moving to intercept. Sounds like DS9 just lost some weaponry at a bad time. Let's see if we can help by disabling the protomatter torpedoes on this station. Thank God one of us can read Zenkethi. What do I press? Is it this? Surprised to see me, Butcher. Let's finish this. Waram Zen Gravu was the captain we encountered at Martok's prison in the Briar Patch. We have an unwanted guest. Finish him off quickly. And his tormentor for years. We defeated him once already, and then it was personal for the general, but now this is just an obstacle. A rampaging, invulnerable to backstabs, angry, several ton obstacle. You tried to end me once before. It won't go any better this time. Your thick skull will make a fine trophy. 
You fight like a Klingon, Captain. Will you die like one as well? Zen Warren fought well, but he won't be coming back from that. Yes, burning plasma does tend to have a way of shortening one's aspirations. They know we're here. Good. Secure those consoles. One to go. Get to it while you can. In this room we do get to look at the protomatter torpedoes that the Zenkethi crafted up as well as the containment pod for their protomatter. Such a narrow-minded use for such a versatile substance. The Lucari at least seem to have a hang of it pretty well, using it to create entire biospheres with a runaway reaction. Still, let's get back to turning all this off, shall we? Clever. Well, they rerouted at least their weapons making control it from the command deck. We'll have to storm their command deck, the very heart of the beast. We'll need to use one of their transporters to get there. I saw one on our way here. Let's use it and get this over with. I knew I'd get to use that transporter. Okay, let's go figure that out next. Well, they're persistent. And here we have a Zenkethi soldier waiting for us by themselves. And I think I recognise them. I am Captain Nefpar. It was I who alerted the Alliance about the attack on Bajor, and it is I who will fight at your side now. The Admiral must be stopped. We now walk the same path, along with the Butcher of Zenkef III. This is unexpected. It is a day for unusual alliances, it seems. I would welcome your help again. So, where is the Admiral? Not far, though I warn you, the way there will be heavily guarded. Expect heavy resistance. Unlike myself, the soldiers here remain steadfast in their loyalty to him. All I ask is that he is given a chance to do the right thing and surrender. Far too many have already died in this madness. Eventually, following Nethpal's onslaught, we arrive at the control centre of the station to find the Admiral flanked by two more soldiers. Captain Parr, I see you walk the path of betrayal with one of our most hated enemies, the Butcher himself. Truly, your depravity knows no bounds. And you, the ever-present thorn between my scales, meddling in my affairs at every turn. Your reckless heroism has endangered trillions. You must be so very proud. Uh, a little bit. We can point out that if the Admiral Zentarak here thought the threat was so great, he could have simply asked for our aid. Oh, who in the Alliance would hear us? The Federation? The Klingons? Both are enemies to us. One too compassionate and the other too honourable to end millions in order to save untold trillions. Yes, but do you know what the Federation is good at? Finding solutions that don't involve genocide. Or we can just dismiss him. Alright, phasers back online. You and Zen Grogu were my best captain's death. Today I lost both of them. This crusade is unjust, and the battle is lost. It's over. Stand down now, or we will strike you down without hesitation. Surrender, Admiral, or fight, if you have the spine for it. Do you really think the conflict will end here, now? Boots all of you. The battle is surprisingly short, and after he loses his subordinates, the Admiral surrenders. Enough! I yield! I yield! 
How proud you must be. You saved Bajor and a few more worlds along with it. This will be a cold comfort to you when you lose millions more, of course. If the threat is going to be wiping out worlds, you're not going to fix it by wiping out worlds. Tell your forces to stand down. Computer, open a fleet-wide channel. All hands, this is the Admiral. An armistice has been reached. Effective immediately. Stand down. Oh my word, he actually did it. You know, recently, enemies have been making the smart decision a lot. It's weird. Enjoy your victory while it lasts, and know this. The time will come when you feckless creatures will see the error of your ways, and I want to be there when it happens. I will relish the look of despair on your pathetic faces. In the meantime, computer, release weapons control to Alliance forces. You can use my command console as you see fit. The station is yours. Nice, it can go on my shelf in my ready room. I will ensure the Admiral honors the peace. See to it that your people honor it as well. Which Admiral? You know what, it doesn't matter. Alpha Team reporting. The command deck is locked down. This is Beta Team. Commencing operation now. Victory belongs to us! Let's return to our ships and get the necessary reports filed quickly. The Ferengi, who runs the bar on Deep Space Nine, keeps a particular vintage of blood wine in stock for me. And I intend to drain every last drop of his supply. Soon, we will celebrate. For tomorrow, we may die! I like this guy. Martok I would clap your hands if you weren't covered in Zenkethi blood and dual wielding disruptors. Incoming data from planets targeted by the Zenkethi. Something's happening. Victory parades? Show us, Lucari! Show us the price of your meddling! Patching it through. And yet, those ships, like something of legend. They belong to the Herc. We must return to our ships immediately. The Herc? I've heard that name. I know them. The greatest enemy to ever challenge the Empire. The Herc. So, this... This is the doom the Zenkethi speak of. The enemy they'd kill billions to stop. Herc, Herc, isn't that just Klingon for outsider or invader or something? The Herc are our greatest foe. An enemy that invaded Kronos over a thousand years ago. No other enemy came so close to ending us, not even the Iconians. For Klingons, they are the monsters of legend. We thought they were extinct. We were fools. So, not triples then? There is lore about the Herc using caretakers, bred to prepare worlds for the return of their masters. I believe what the Sinkethi call Transuli are those creatures. Wherever they were, the Herc were there as well. Sleeping, waiting to return, to attack. And now, it seems that day has come. Okay, I'm open to recommendations. Recommendations? We fight! There is no honorable alternative. All of our lore tells us that the Herc will attack without fear, without hesitation. If Bajor is to survive, we must meet the Herc in battle. I mean, that 
tracks with what we've witnessed so far. All hands to battle stations. Many a Klingon has dreamed of battle with the Herc to test themselves as Kalis once did. They walked in on top of us. DS9 is under attack. This is Captain Nathpa speaking for the Zenkepi forces. All ships target the Zenzuni vessels. <laughs> These ships are not fighting like ships, they're just throwing themselves at us. We've lost shields. DS9 is taking heavy damage. With that, one of DS9's upper pylons is engulfed in flame and explodes. DS9 has been disabled. Deep Space Nine, this is Martok. Report. Curlin. Curlin, no. A bunch of these little Zenkethi swarmers getting very close behind us. We can't shake them. No, that's a work for. Hey, Jeff, do it now. Damn it, we've got no room to maneuver. Wait, no room to maneuver. Eject the warp plasma. As our rear shields fail and our hull drops to 16%, we speed away, dumping warp plasma straight down the throats of our pursuing vessels, locking them in place, buying us the room we need to turn around and destroy our pursuers. The Herc are coming in fast. They're hard to hit. I'll say, and the armed is not equipped to hit massive swarms at once. Uh, I'm putting up quite a fight! Slow down those hurts. Alliance forces, this is Captain Nathpa. A large number of enemy vessels are converging on our position, and we are still defenseless from the previous battle. We need your support so we can safely evacuate. We face a common foe, despite our differences. Can we count on your aid? If there's any lesson we've all learned today, it's ask and you shall receive. Comms are back, but nearly everything else is offline here. God damn, DS9 is wrecked, and there are more of these little Herc ship things. Captain Sean, all aligned sports. The Enterprise is here to help. With that, Captain Sean and the USS Enterprise F, freshly returned from an overhaul post-Iconian war, emerge to defend Bajor. These Chityat Swarmer ships are tiny, fast, manoeuvrable, powerful for their size, but they lack shielding and a sense of self-preservation. They simply swarm over a target, harrying it until its shields go, even emerging from warp at dangerously close proximities. General Martok, we will await you! In Stovacor. We're losing Alliance ships left and right under waves of these little buggers. Singularity breach! Singularity breach! Shoot them! Shoot them! Most of us evacuated, and the Admiral is still on board. Return to that camp! Being a traitor with a new ally! Oh great, what now, Dominion? Can't get a clear reading. Our sensor arrays are pretty banged up over here. Frankly, we have bigger concerns. We're in danger of being overrun by the Herc, and if we fall, Bajor is next. Yeah, if the damage DS9 has sustained, it's barely operational, and our fleet has been reduced by over half. The Zenkethia are all over the place right now, half are retreating, they don't know what to do. And now someone's sneaking through the wormhole. Kalis didn't have the Dominion to deal with when he battled the Herc. This complicates matters. 
As Kern finishes saying that, dozens of swarmers. Come in weapons hot, but they're not targeting us. Dominion vessels, commence attack on the hearth. And remember, victory is life. What? The Dominion is on our side. We've had some dealings with the Dominion, but they denied Federation talks during the Dominion War, and we never learned why. The closest we got was when Sela managed to strong arm a couple of vessels to get a small token fleet for the Battle of Sol. Record is littered with souls that felt fear when facing the hurt in battle. Hurt target eliminated. Victory is mine. Seems Jem Hadal, right? We've met them before, but mostly only a breakaway faction who followed Lars and his new link in the Alpha Quadrants. These guys, well, they've got new ships that I don't recognise. Newer Dominion vessels. I think this is the real Gamma Quadrant Dominion. Their smaller, more agile, scarab-like Dominion fighters keep up with the smaller Herc vessels much more efficiently. And with the overwhelming Dominion fleet on our side, it's not long before silence eventually settles as the smoke of the last swarm dissipates. Alliance forces, I am Loris Four. I bring you greetings from the Founders. While it should be quite evident that we come to you in peace, I understand that my predecessor was a source of discord during her time here. Trust is important, so please, allow me to return the Alliance personnel we recovered from the battle station before it exploded, as a gesture of good faith. Thank you, the Zenkethi and our boarding parties? Right, but why now? What brings the Dominion here, and in such large numbers, orbiting Bajor? while we're practically on our knees, almost defenceless. <laughs> it does kind of feel like there are sharks in the water, and we've just shed a lot of blood. As always, I live to serve the Founders. I realize the concept of such a selfless existence is often challenging to those in the Alliance, but it really is my only goal in life. As to our presence here, the fleet has traveled here today to bring you a message, but it is not for me to deliver. Okay, then... Who's delivering this message? We have to talk. Oh. I know that changeling. He's called Odo. He used to run security for DS9. And now he's here, in command of a Dominion fleet. Impressive entrance. Whatever this is about, it isn't a matter to be taken lightly. If Odo has something to say, it would be foolish not to listen. The return of both the Dominion and the Herc is no coincidence. I suspect we'll be seeing each other again very soon. Yeah, most definitely. We're probably going to hang around Bajor, you know, help with repairs and keep an eye on the Dominion fleet that we can't really do anything about. So, with that unexpected aid, a tense atmosphere settles over Bajor as an armada of Dominion ships settle in, shadowing our vessels, but doing no more than simply watching. On top of this, Odo, the one founder with a strong connection to Bajor, has arrived, probably responsible for this development, but after the return of a Klingon myth, the Herc, I'm not going to assume anything. Deep Space Nine itself has been severely damaged by this battle, and relations with the Zenkethi are up in the air right now. This mess needs several meetings to sort out, but who knows how much time we have, and how many more Herc ships are out there. The coming days will start sorting through these events, but first off, I believe we have a founder to meet, which we shall have to do next time on the next episode of the Star Trek Online story series. Until then, thank you for joining me as we continue to explore the ever-evolving narrative of Star Trek Online, and until the next episode, I've been Rick. Thanks again, and goodbye.